consistently. Uh, but it looks like we're getting into the game number one, and it is going to be that Lucian versus, of course, Radish on the Petra. No surprises here with this Lucian pick. Radish, of course, on that Petra that we're used to seeing. We, I mean, he's, uh, like we said, one of the only Orb players out there. He's one of the only players doing it on the Petra, and he's had so much success in his career, despite having, you know, somewhat of a relatively short career. No, but on the other side, he's, he's been looking so clean on this Lucian. Definitely, uh, like you said, has been playing those blasters a lot, so not uh, too weird to see him do very well with the blasters. He does get disarmed there by the side air from Radish. Nice little neutral light down. Singapore. Oh, gets but caught. he connects. Wow, I expected to, you know, knees to, to see that coming because, like, you, you're playing Petra. That is one thing that you, you should do because it's very safe. Even though it's very telegraphed, it's also very safe for you to do. Went for the first inlight into the insig. Didn't actually make connection with the neutral signature. Chasing up high, isn't able to find anything, lands back down. Puts out a little bit more damage for the neutral air. He's really looking for those recovery KOs. That side sig wasn't anywhere near. I don't know if he did that as a bait and thought he could respond with, like, a neutral light or something else after that. But he ended up getting punished for it. GC side signature as well. He's struggling to find these KOs. It's about a minute 15 into this game. And in true classic Lucian style, it's a blaster side air. Yeah, but you generally don't want to be trying to finish off with a blaster side air if you're a Lucian player. Usually it's all about those signatures, right? Like the Qatar down sig, Qatar side sig. Or you're looking for the blaster setup into the recovery, that down light dash jump recovery. Nice falling side air coming out from Radish. As he's landing back on the ground, he's been very aerial so far. Even got below knees on that time, hit him with the recovery. Now again, yet another landing side air to get back onto the platform. He's building up damage so much more quickly than knees is able to. Even with that nice three-piece string coming out, knees is in KO damage, and Radish is looking for the KO moves. The gauntlets are out, so it could be just a raw recovery like he's doing so far. Could be a GC D-Light into the recovery. Knees, it's just the recovery there from Radish. Knees hit the D-Light into the recovery. Didn't have quite enough damage, that high ceiling on this map. And, of course, the defense of Petra. Yeah, a lower ceiling map, and Knees would have had that stock advantage. But now he's back on that back foot, trying to, again, take the stock off of Radish. Goes for the neutral light, tries to read for that recovery, but Radish dodging the other direction. Radish here staying relatively grounded. Like, he'll get one jump height up, and that time Knees actually caught him right in the middle of the air. Got the KO off the top, even though it's at that 45-degree angle, and there's a lot of distance to that blast zone. He was able to add up enough damage, and the damage pacing is a lot better for Knees now. Of course, you can see in the top right, they're basically even so far. Radish finally getting over to a weapon, has the gauntlets in his hand, immediately wakes up with a ground pound there. Nice falling dare into the recovery. Still is now really building up that lead on top of knees, even with the whiff weapon toss, finds an unarmed neutral light, picks up the weapon, side light, side air, wrong side towards the blast zone, out comes the d -Sig. and even then, he only barely gets punished by it, side light, side air, and that's game one for Radish. Yeah, just in terms of raw stat lines of the characters, the trades are 100% in Radish's favor. He's bringing a lot more strength to the table than the Lucian is, and then you couple that with the weapon sets, right? Orbs hitting harder per weapon hit versus those Katars of Nice. So Nice has to be doing more work if he wants to take these stocks down. There's that down sig that caught Nice. I was honestly surprised that I was going to catch him. Because, like, two, like, you, one, you, like, you know it's coming. Yeah. Especially early in the set, like, you know it's going to come out, and that's when you're like, okay, I'm going to sit down here, and eventually he's going to keep doing it, and I'm going to find his timing and figure out exactly how to punish it. But getting hit by it early, of course, we are in Fortress of Lions, which does have a smaller sidewall. It's not like he has all the room in the world to play with over there. So maybe he just happened to make a critical error that early on in the set, and he paid for it. No, but Raiders now... Nice GC side light goes for more after that side. You saw him chasing, looking for the positioning there, but didn't see it. Still trying to catch that landing of knees. You can see the way Radish is babysitting that aerial movement in knees. Down sig, and knees gets caught yep. again. I mean, that's kind of what knees had to do. That was just really good timing by Radish. Knees. Knees was, was forced into that position. You were seeing him like slide under the stage, essentially, which when he did the recovery, he actually kind of hit that angled wall and rode it back up into the D-Sig. So if I'm Knees, do not go to this map. Try to avoid small sidewall maps as much as you possibly can. Yeah, Knees really hoping for more wall for the next map pick right now as uh, Radish again, side light, side air, adding up even more to this advantage over Knees. Knees comes down, hits a side light, but once again, struggling to finish the stocks off of Radish. Radish is playing phenomenally this game. And you see right there, even though Radish was in sweat beads, he had to side air over to the wall. That's how far behind Knees is. It's now two stocks. He was worried to commit to an edge guard because he was also in the red on his second stock. It didn't eventually matter because seconds later he was taken out. But Radish is absolutely turning up the pressure onto Knees. 
if Omni's, if he has any other legend prepared, I would swap to that. If this game continues the way it is now, because Radish is doing just even better than he was the previous game, so something is not working here for Nees. Yeah, Nees is, is absolutely struggling, even in like the damage department, right? Like it's not just him struggling to get those KOs; he's struggling to just get as much damage as Radish is putting out. Didn't even hit the nair after the D-Light into the chase dodge down uh, down air on his blasters. Like, yeah, you're seeing a lot of moves come out, but it's just, for the most part, they're not putting that much pressure onto Radish. The damage is okay, but at this point, he's so far behind that the damage build he has to get has to be near perfect. Does hit the unarmed recovery there to get back on the stage. Has guitars in his hands. Down it. No. See him play a little bit further back there. Knees comes back up onto the stage. This is his final stock here in game number two and cannot afford to get hit much more than this. Nice little nair there. Side air, and that'll do it. Radish up 2-0 over Knees. I'm with you, man. I think he needs to swap yeah. the character. Unless he just straight up does not have another character prepared, then obviously the Lucian that he's been practicing is going to be better than that. But we one, we got to go to a different map. Even if you swap characters, you got to go to a different map. You cannot go to a small sidewall map. You've now been caught several times by the down signature over on the corner. The One of the most telegraphed moves that you can think of in Brawlhalla. It's like that and then Orion Spear in Sig and then like some tarot signatures. Yeah. But other than that, the most telegraphed move in the game you're not getting around it. You're not even close to be the, to being able to punish it. So just completely avoid it. Go to a different map. It looks like we're seeing a possible legend switch. Yes, he Ooh. did lock in the Rayman. Interesting choice here. Swapping both weapons completely. No carry over to the Lucian. The closest is like you've got Gauntlets, which can kind of be in a similar mental category as Katars, but even then. Like, there's pretty much no carryover in terms of mechanics. This is a really interesting swap. I'm curious what he's looking for, but they're going back Three, to Fortress of Lions. Two, so maybe one, he's hoping wall. to have more control on those wall touches because he has gotten caught, like you said, twice by those down six from Radish on that orb. And there we are, knees with the axe in hand. We've seen some axes do work this weekend, and uh, they've predominantly come out of the EE players. Yeah, we uh, talking a little bit about that Taros that we mentioned earlier as like the counter to a Lord Vrax. So maybe, maybe the Axe is having its heyday. We saw Pugsy tweet about Axe being really, really good the other day. And Nyze has a level 43 Rayman, and his number one leveled legend is a Mordex. So you have the gauntlet carryover for that. Of course, we know Nyze has a solid pair of gauntlets. I haven't seen a Nyze Axe in a very long time. And based on what we've seen so far, I'm not sure why. It's looking good. He's at least able to trade out with Radish a lot better than when he was on the Katars. But Radish with the GC sideline side air is going to take the stock lead. Still tearing him apart here. Now keep in mind, this is a winner's round one of top 32. The winner of this moves on to face Luna, and that will be a top eight qualifier match on the winner's side. There's a sidelight side air. Now with the Axe, he does have sidelight neutral air, so he has consistent damage build. Not necessarily consistent KO options, which he was struggling with before, but that is a consistent KO option right there for Nyes. He grabs that one. He's in a pretty good spot here. There's no massive two-stock lead going the way of Radish this time. So the switch so far is definitely showing better than his Lucian. It's definitely looking better, but obviously you want it to take the W here because otherwise Nyes is going down to the elimination side of things. A little bit of dash dancing there, trying to bait out some movement, maybe try to catch with the sidelight once again. Hits a neutral light, but doesn't see the opportunity to go out for that side light. Radish is still consistently adding up those damage numbers. Consistently punishing the landings with the side light side air. Just classic orb, orb gameplay and really like classic Radish gameplay because we don't really have any other standard for classic orb gameplay. Almost reaching up with that nair and grabbing Radish, sending him down again. Side light side air. Such a consistent option. Goes for the side air on that on the gauntlets. The dodge came through from knees, but he still gets punished afterward. Radish actually disarming himself there. You saw him trying to deny weapons. These ended up scrunking out the axe, but now Radish is the one with the weapon control. Throws away the orbs, over to the gauntlets, and it's the recovery. Radish one stock away from putting this one away. Even though he's just a little bit in the lead compared to the previous game against Nyes' Lucian, he still is in essentially complete control here. All of his options that he's going for, so many of them are hitting. He just, I see the confidence coming out from Radish quite a bit. He's controlling so much of the stage, controlling so much of the movement that Nyes is forced into doing. You're seeing Nyes is having to step onto that soft platform so often as like a moment of respite. Yeah, it needs to just get a little bit further away from Radish. And like you said, Radish has done such a good job of catching the landings of Nyes. 
So Nice has to find safer ways to get back down onto the stage to challenge. Over to the Axe now, he's going to be looking for a side air. That's the main KO tool for the Axe right now. And doesn't find the connection recovery, not going to hit either. Dude, Radish's punish game is incredible so far against Nice. Even that neutral light all the way from sort of the left third of the stage, not going to be the KO. There's the neutral air. I was kind of expecting a recovery to come out of that, but no, he wanted to force the edge guard more. Gets away around underneath into the left of the orb weapon toss and actually gets the recovery for the KO off the top, evening up the stocks, but he's very much in the red. Radish searching for a weapon. Nice neutral light air into the gravity cancel neutral light there. It's now gauntlet v. gauntlet. He actually uh, decided actively to stick with the gauntlets over the axe, which is a bit surprising to me because his axe was looking really solid at the start of the last one and also kind of giving him some breathing room into that final stock. But looks like he wants the gauntlets to close out this game if he can do so. Trying to open up with a weapon toss. Radish behind it once again. Radish avoiding these weapon toss openers from these. Radish was really quick, of course, to throw his gauntlets away because he likely wanted the orb, but you're seeing him hold on to that orb. He is not carelessly tossing that away whatsoever, even though there's a spawn, because the next time, if he disarms himself, the next grab he would get would be the gauntlets, but he's not even worried about it. Sidelight Sider to finish that one off. Knees with a very tough loss, but Radish with a confident victory here. I think Radish really needed that win, too. It's been a, a hot minute since he's been kind of in the limelight for the North Americans. There's a lot of people who have kind of stepped up in the past uh, little while here. Like, Radish was once one of the top players to be talked about for North America.